And what we can do is we can play with a supply voltage that might help us with that. So you can see on the plot here on the right that uh, the on current, the off current, and the subthreshold swing are being plotted. And as you ramp up the supply voltage, the on current increases, and it increases by an order of magnitude from 0 0.5 to roughly 0 0.2, and the uh, off current here shown in green is roughly flat. But at some point, at roughly 0 0.2, the subthreshold swing starts to increase dramatically from the value of 12 to over 20, and also the off current starts to increase. That is really due that, to the fact that the, you get ambipolar channel behavior, meaning if your bias is too large, your central blockage region here is not blocking both channels. And that will kill your device performance in terms of subthreshold swing and on current, because you will have additional channels that will conduct. So it, you, don't, you want to be in the supply voltage less than 0.2, which is uh, roughly uh, less than twice the gap with the built-in potential. So now if you have an ideal device, you can start to look at line edge roughness. So in, you will have non-perfect edges and line edge roughness, and that should lead to some sort of scattering or effect. We have used a very simple roughness model here and re just remove a pair of atoms with probability P. So you sort of march through and with a certain probability you just take a pair of atoms away. If you do that, you should do a little numerical experiment first where you consider, say, a segment of a graphene ribbon and figure out if I take a pair of atoms away like this, and if I took this structure here and repeated it infinitely, I would have a super lattice, right? And you can start to compute what the band gap of this supercell would be. And it will be a function on how many atoms are you taking away, or what's the probability of taking away atoms here. And basically, you can find it to be depending linearly on the probability of line edge roughness. So your band gap goes down as you increase your roughness. So rough depend, uh, linear dependence on the probability p. And why is that relevant? Why is that super lattice point of view relevant? So in an ideal structure, I'm showing here on the left, uh, a density of states in this uh, graphene structure. So around the intrinsic channel, we have these basically bands that are sitting here. And in fact, you have, if you look really carefully, there's like a ground state that sits here that has S-like symmetry. And then up here, you will have excited states. Why do you have a bound state? You guys in the lecture should know that by now, right? You have uh, interference effects of a barrier here and another barrier here. You have a quasi-bound state that is confined above a barrier. Okay, And you see that for the electrons and you see that for the holes because the dispersion for electrons and holes in a graphene sheet are the same. Now if you statistically roughen the line edge, you kind of have a sort of a super lattice type effect and you, and you narrow the gap locally. What happens is you start to confine states in that, into that super lattice. So you see here's a ground state, here's an excited state to the right, and the third state even on top. Okay, so you have confined states that are sitting above, uh, in the super lattice and above the, ga uh, above the gap. And that means you will tunnel through these guys, and you will tunnel through them resonantly. That means if you have something like this, you narrow the gap, you will be able to tunnel through these, and the gap is narrowed. If the gap is narrowed, you increase the current. All right. So if you look at a bunch of samples, 
they will differ from each other, and if you plot them on top of each other, you see that it's a kind of a messy plot, but the current can vary over an order of magnitude from one sample to the next. Right? So one device would be rather different than the next device. The key element is all devices are different, and to get some insight, what we would want to look at is the average on and off currents and the standard deviation and the maximum and min values. So here in this sample, we, we, will, we have varied from 0 to 10 percent to the roughness probability. So now let's look at the standard, um, the averages and standard deviations for these different probabilities and look at the uh, off current and the on current as a function of probability of line edge roughness and, and measure the statistical width of these numbers. You see that the on current has a fluctuation but not that much. But the off current has a pretty strong probability uh, dependence uh, or the fluctuations of the off current has a strong dependence on the line edge roughness uh, probability. So there's a strong deterioration of most device performances and you really see on average say for a device that has no line edge roughness in purple on the left here versus in green with 2.5 percent, uh, in blue with 5 percent, in red and 7 and black and 10 percent, really your sub-threshold swing from uh, deteriorates really badly from being sub 60 millivolt millivolt per decade to something it is rather comparable. So what we've shown in this uh, uh, presentation here is that uh, we've done a graphene nano ribbon tunnel fat transistor simulation. We use a very simple PZ type binding orbital model. We have a 3D Poisson Schrodinger solver. We do a line edge roughness and we get localized band gap states that really deteriorates the performance of the device and uh, what we really are working on right now is to create a more accurate band structure model and include dissipative scattering, electron phonon scattering uh, to model these devices better. Any questions? Okay.